Wow. So that's, that's it. Four years of hard work in med school at the end of a seven year track. That's it. My residency application is submitted on a Saturday night in a hotel room. Lord, I trust you. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Alright, is this thing rolling? Framings checked. Not bad. Y'all know the rules. Coffee first. So honestly, a couple years ago when I envisioned in my head what this video would be, I was thinking beautiful b-roll, fancy cuts, super cinematic music, make it super dramatic. But here I am sitting in my studio Airbnb on my away rotation with none of my fancy equipment, just filming on my iPhone. And in just a beautiful way, I think that's just humbly poetic. Now there's this idea that's termed tyranny of choice, where when presented with multiple very attractive options, it makes it harder for you to choose one option. And I think it's very similar in choosing a medical specialty to focus, well, the rest of my career on. Over the past several years, I've done my part in trying to explore the many different medical specialties that you can go into. And in many ways, you guys have explored with me because you've been watching all my videos. And you would think that extra exposure to all the specialties has made my choice even easier. And in fact, it went the reverse way. It, it made it so much more difficult because I got to understand very deeply so many aspects of each specialty that many people don't see. I acquired a much deeper appreciation for primary care. I saw the deep depths of surgery. And then I found hidden gems along the way that hopefully I can share to you so that way you don't find those hidden gems late in the game like I did. And there's gonna be a lot of people out there saying the, the tree, the diagnostic tree, if you will, for deciding a specialty is figure out if you wanna do work with kids or adults, figure out if you wanna do procedures or clinical, and then figure out if you wanna do OR or not OR but my story is a lot more complex than that. My first exposure to medicine was actually in pediatric emergency medicine. And the person who quite literally introduced me to the field was my very first 73 question interview, Dr. Wild, one of the most brilliant mentors and physicians that I have ever met. Dr. Wild, if you're watching this, you have no reason to be watching this, but thank you from the bottom of my heart for really being that initial flame that sparked where I am today. And from there, I saw one, the heart of medicine. I saw what in my head a physician should be. The person that's there in the darkest moments of humanity that can be there to make calm out of complete madness and a stoic voice that can get things done when everybody else is running buck wild. And from there, I also learned that, hey, I, I got a pretty good knack for working with not just kids, but parents. And it's something that I absolutely fell in love with. The fact that we could walk these very concerned and scared parents through these intense, frightening situations for their, their little babies. And I mean that in the sense of like literal babies, but also, you know, they, they care about their kid, whether they're eight years old or 20 years old. From there, I said, you know what? Pediatrics, that was my branching point. But as I went through my clinical rotations, I realized I, the clinic is not for me. I needed something a little bit higher paced. I appreciate what they do so, so much. And it's so important what they do in primary care, but I just, couldn't see myself doing it for the entirety of a career. So I started to look at my other options. And that's when I found the operating room. And I mentioned this a lot in my personal statement where it just felt so familiar to what I was used to doing on the camera side of things. 
it felt like a film set where everybody had a distinct role. The surgeons were the actors who were trained to do their job. The anesthesiologists were like the directors, the producers, kind of manning the show, helping guide everything to completion. Your scrub techs are stagehands, your circulators are your DPs. Like everything just fits so easily in my head and I just fell in love with that environment. And of course, also there's so much opportunity for video and simulation work within operating room fields and specialties. So I was like, oh sweet. Like I get to bring my camera in here and use my talents to further medical education in a way that I always wanted to. But here came the challenging part. I actually ended up settling on two that I found and it flip-flopped a lot, a lot. Which is why me personally, I needed to take that time to decide for myself. And the reason why I've been kind of keeping my own specialty, not necessarily secret, but just on the back burner, at least in the grand scheme of things publicly. Those two specialties were anesthesia and orthopedic surgery, actually. I loved both for so many different reasons in their own unique ways. When I'm on call and responding to the ER consults on orthopedics, being able to walk in the room and be like, hey man, what was it? Was it monkey bars? Was it a four-wheeler, golf cart, trampoline? and be able to help mom and the kid through that process was so rewarding to me. And then at the same time, having that tangible fix. So I'm not guessing if things are fixed, it's just bone broken, bone put back together. I'm not guessing. And that was very tangible to me. On the flip side, anesthesia was just this beautifully cerebral field that also allowed me to pursue a level of reassurance that I fell in love with especially with the parents and the families. Being able to walk in the room, explain the anesthesia, something that's like very unknown to a lot of parents, play with the kids and tell them, hey, everything's gonna be all right, distract them, and then also tell the parents, hey, we're gonna take good care of your child, was something I just, I loved every single second of it and that's something that nobody will ever tell you about the field of anesthesia because nobody really knows what they do and I had to discover that for myself. It truly was a hidden gem and it allowed me to be in the OR, work with the people that I wanted to and also still be involved with a lot of procedures and surgery. As you can probably tell, I loved both a lot. And so it was very hard for me to choose. Which I think brings me to my most important lesson over these past three and a half years. Um, now that I've submitted my applications and I took a lot of time to decide what to apply to, it's because at the end of the day, I always ask these physicians to sell their specialty like a car salesman in my interviews. But this has to be the specialty that is right for you because it's not gonna be your mom and dad, your friend, your mentor, aunt and uncle that is gonna be going through residency and well, living the life of that doctor. It's gonna be you. And that means that you have to decide what specialty fits best for you. And those factors include family, partners, friendships, location, time and training, kids even. And I know a lot of people are like, you need to do what you love to do. But I would actually argue that I learned and learned almost a little too late that all those things that I just mentioned, life is just as big of a determinant of what specialty you need to choose as doing something that you love. Now, believe it or not, this channel, YouTube, everything else played zero factor. Literally zero percent in my specialty choice because at the end of the day, I didn't go to medical school to become a YouTuber. I went to medical school because I want to become a doctor and serve the patients that I see and be that doctor that I wanted to be when I first got to the pediatric emergency rooms. The one who could make just beauty out of madness, could be the calm voice in the room when everyone is panicking and give 
that little sense of hope to the people that need it, that everything's gonna be okay. And for me, I am very, very proud to say that this 2024 ERAS cycle, I will be applying to continue my medical training as a physician anesthesiologist with interest in pediatrics, obviously, and regional pain in case the ortho itch is still in me at the end of my residency. It's been a really, really long journey and it by far has been the most difficult decision of my life. And I just want to thank you guys for following along on the journey, my mom and my dad and my brother, all the mentors that I've met along the way and the friends who have seen me at my highest of highs and quite literally lowest of lows throughout the past couple of years. I hope to bring you all some good news as the application cycle continues. To any residents, fellows, and program directors watching this, hi, please hire me. <laughs> I can work hard, trust me. I, I know a thing or two about juggling a lot of different projects at the same time. But yeah, the cat's out of the bag now. So, <sighs> it feels good. It feels really good. And I'm so happy to just at least have a direction for my next step. And I cannot wait to continue to impact patients now as a soon to be actual ND literally empty. Oh, and check this out, guys. Look at this. Bluey scrub cap. Yeah, bluey scrub cap. The kids love this. Oh, and always keep a plushie on your name tag. It's just, it, this is OP for our calming kids down. It's great. Thank you, guys.